Welcome to the Timbuktu Podcast. You have Mamadou and Jai, one of the co-founders of the Timbuktu Podcast, the best show in the world for all things regarding just starting and building your art collecting journey. And I'm here with a special guest, Mr. Derek Tudor. And yeah, I'm really excited. You know, Derek's an individual who I got introduced to with another artist that we work with by the name of <laughs> Rebecca Robinson. And Derek, man, he's an amazing human being, amazing artist, and he's doing great things within the city of Indianapolis. So really excited to kick off episode three with your story. Yeah. So how are you feeling today, Derek? Sounds great to me, man. I'm uh yeah, hey, this sounds great to me, man. I'm I'm humbled and grateful to be able to be a part of this, man. I'm thank thank you to uh for inviting me to this show, man. This is a really a great uh pleasure. Great pleasure, man. Absolutely, man. So Derek, like let's just start off. Can you tell the people a little bit about yourself and just like the beginning of your art journey? Like when did you first fall in love with art and how has that relationship grown over the years? Well, um um like I said, I'm Derek Tudor. I, um, I created uh, Derek Tudor Arts LLC. Um, and it's not like Derek Tudor's art. Derek Tudor Arts is all artists, all disciplines, all together. It's like an organization, and I like to bring artists together and uh, help them get their uh, their artwork out there on different platforms and in art galleries, and in particular, my own art galleries. Uh, I've helped a lot of uh, upcoming artists and some artists that never gotten into um before I've gotten their artwork shown, I got them out there, and I tell you the truth, man. I'm gonna do in two years. I was, I was, I've mentored those people, and I was in their shows that they were curating. You know, what I'm saying so, I was a featured artist at their show, artist at their show, which uh, you know, that's uh, that's one of my accomplishments, man. Right there, is to uh, mentor and um, counsel, um, and coach uh, other other artists, and especially in a business form in the realm of the uh, the art. Uh, life in the art world in the art culture I love that um, people do rely on me to help them a lot of times uh, but my artwork started man like they said about when I was like nine years old a quick little story um, my mom knew I was loved art I was like nine and I remember I never never knew what a mural was but I knew I had some cool colored uh, fluorescent paint so one day <laughs> my mother was gone to work and I put a big giant mural on the wall of a fountain with all these colors. My mom came home from work and said, what are you doing to my walls? Get that stuff off my walls. I, don't, I told you, to, don't paint on my walls. I said, okay, cool. So later on that night, it was a Friday night. Everybody came over to my mom's house, you know. So they, so they didn't have a few millers, you know what I'm saying? They didn't have their little drink and it was partying downstairs. My mother came up to my room, seen that mural that I did with the fluorescent light on it and it was all illuminated and it was beautiful. And she said, oh man, that was nice, that's nice. She told everybody, y'all come up here and look what my baby done did. So then she was like, oh, she bragged on it, you know, saying she loved it. She said, don't paint on no more. <laughs> and uh, so I painted over that one wall, white, and then I put them another one on top of that, you know. And then she said, I told you don't paint on no more of my walls. I said, mom, I didn't. It's the same wall. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But after that, man, I just, um, just kept on uh, learning more and more different uh, mediums and disciplines. Uh, like I said, I'm a multidisciplinary artist. I love all mediums, man. I um, I'm also known as the, the man of steel because I do uh, welding and I make uh, art sculptures. Yeah. Uh, I had some sculptures that was in the um the All Star Game of this year that they are in, in my city in Indianapolis, and um, I had some big pieces in there. You know, uh, really cool uh, artwork for uh, you know the basketball players. Um, and then uh, I do um all different sorts of forms art and uh. But I, I can go, you can, you guys, when you have a lot of followers, they want to learn more, they can just check me out on Instagram and Facebook and learn about all the different types of um, art that I do do. Um, I am the creator of our country's first mini Van Gogh mobile art gallery. Yeah, the mini Van Gogh mobile art gallery was created in the pandemic, during the pandemic, because uh, they shut down my shows. I had so much art, I had to get it out there. So uh, God gave me that vision, man, and I created it, and it's been blowing up ever since. So. You know, and the guy, them other folks that don't look like us, they want that mini Van Gogh real bad. And uh, they give me two million, they can have it. And uh, I'll come up with something else. But anyway, but yeah. Man, man. Thank you, Derek. The shows I do now are um, evolving. 
So I was doing regular, you know, art shows, art shows, event, uh, exhibitions. But now, as um, the, for the event that me and you met for is uh, the TIA exhibition, T-I-A, TIA stands for Technology, Innovations, and Arts Exhibition. And that's why we mainly got together for the TIA ex exhibition with, with them special skills that you got. Yeah. I know your, your, your fans know about what you do. You's a beast. Appreciate that, man. But man, Derek, there's so much to unpack there, man. Like, like so many gems that you just dropped, like one. I love the fact that some of the artists that you've helped out to, you know, help them in their own journey, elevating their career, they like gave you the platform for a second. And so that just speaks to like the whole collaborative nature of like this art community. Like you never know yeah. how you can impact one another and it can go by show by show. But like in the long term, like if you're just focused on just adding value to others, like it just spars off into like something even greater. So that was one. Um, shout out to your mom for not whooping you when you was painting on her walls. <laughs> I don't know. I wasn't. I wasn't that good. I, I used to spray on it. I got whooped as a kid. So yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I got spared because I, I got you know. And then, then she was my favorite. She was my biggest fan too, man. Up until yeah. two years ago when she passed, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, she said she's all over my Instagram, Facebook, you know, with shows, with my shirts. She have on my artwork like this piece here. She, she was she, she uh, every time I do something new, she's like, oh, I want one of those, <laughs> you know. So yeah, she was she was an amazing woman, and she she uh, helped me be the artist and the man that I am today. Amen, amen, man. So. Yeah, man, like so many great things. I want to dive into like the whole minivan concept because we're not going to just skip over that. Like you just said, oh, you know, like the country's first art minivan. Like tell us more about that. So it was like 2020 pandemic unfortunately occurred. And so yeah. unfortunately, like a lot of public spaces like art galleries, museums, these cultural institutions had to shut down. And as we know in this space, you need to have that foot traffic in order yep. to survive. But you took this innovative approach. Tell us more. Yeah, um, like I said, um, once they shut down our city, Indianapolis, and they shut down all the shows. And at the time, I had a a, a show touring uh, out of state called. Um, it was a, a a show that was uh, man. It was it was an amazing show. Um, so I had all this artwork and all these other artists coming that wanted to do it, my show. So they shut it down. And, um, like I said, I had my art. I'm like, Hey, I got, got so much art. I got to get it out there. And I had a white minivan and I was I already knowing the wheel and all that. So I, um, said, all right, said that you can, uh, have events. I mean, um, businesses can open up at like 50% capacity and then outdoors you can do a, you know, have your, your your customers out there. So I said, hey, let me bring that work, artwork to the people that are going to be outdoors at these establishments. So I partnered with companies and, and businesses and restaurants and I would set my minivan go on their parking lot and people was eating and everything. They come over to the art gallery. So now they have a mobile more art gallery outdoors in the elements. So that's healthy. So, you know what I'm saying? So people won't be out, you know, they had the masks on back then. So right. everybody could just walk around the art gallery, the, the van, so the, the art is uh, grand openings or um, my state have a big affair that rent me, that rent the van. I'll bring the minivan, go set it up, boom, park it, put the hang all the artwork on there, all my artwork. So now they didn't pay me. Now I put my art on there. Now I sell my artwork, make more money, you know, and then get more um, uh, art collectors knowing my name, getting out there. And now it evolved from that to where it's now I feature artists on there. So, and then I have a, I just bought, purchased a new uh, mini stage. So now I can have a live entertainment there, you know, on the back. And um, so it evolved so much to where this event, the TIA event that you know, that we talked about that, uh, it, uh, it attracted the, the attention of um, my state of Indiana, the National Endowment for the Arts, uh, some other cu couple of uh, big sponsors for this a TIA event. They gave me some funds to make it bigger. So now at the in the in the back of the minivan, I opened up the back. I I was able to I got blessed with a, some funds to buy a big 24 inch four large print 
large format printer with an on-screen computer and all that, so I don't have to have it hooked up to anything. So I can just punch on my this art piece right here or say this it's Jesus piece right here. I can punch it up on the screen, print it right out on a poster. So it's print on demand now at the Mindy Van Gogh, which is crazy. You know what I'm saying? Print on demand. So therefore, I don't have to buy a whole lot of stock and, and yeah. have a lot of um, inventory of, of prints mm -hmm. that maybe sales, maybe not. So, but now I just print on demand. So therefore, I'm, it's super efficient. I don't, yeah. you know, waste any money. Yes. And uh, and also, we evolved to uh, having monitors on there at this event. So I got like a 24-inch monitor that is going to have uh, my uh, me and about three other digital and animation artists. And that's going to have our um, in innovations, the technology aspect of artwork on the monitor, hung on the... Uh, Mini Van Gogh, as you go around looking at the art, here's a monitor, put these headphones on, look at an animated uh, clip or something that one of my artists made by the name Kuvan or yeah. Lyle. And then um, another brother that's going to be there featured is named Omar. He has um, mastered the augmented reality. So mm -hmm. this piece right here is going to be turned into augmented reality also. That's the Jesus piece, it's pretty famous. And um, yeah, so the augmented reality is going to all that's going to be projected, man, on the screens and enlivening color, man. So, you know, the mini Van Gogh, man, has uh, really gone, man. It's gone. And I'm, I'm and one thing about it at the T event, the venue that I got is called the Martin Luther King Center. They are donating three minivans, white also, and we're going to have a fleet of mini Van Gogh mobile art galleries galleries mm -hmm. at this event. First time ever. I'm going to call Ripley's, I mean, um, uh, what's that? Uh, World, Guinness Book of World Records and try to set yeah. a new, new record for the most uh, mobile minivans art galleries at one at one uh, location. So no one has ever done it, so I'm going to just create a yeah, new why not? record. Okay. Yeah. Shoot. Create a new record. And, and, that, and that's... And that's what's really powerful about doing things that seems unconventional or some people may even say like strange, like what? I'm pretty sure you may have heard even other people in the beginning, if you were to even tell them the idea, be like, our art gallery minivan, that doesn't make sense. A gallery is supposed to be this exquisite place that you go into. Yeah. Like what's really powerful about the minivan on the go gallery is the fact that it has created like opportunities for both collectors and artists right so as you mentioned yes going to locations to collect with a bigger class of collectors so they don't have to you know travel in these far distances to like these markets yep. like they have the privilege of just being in their own location like in our previous episode with landon prather <laughs> he's based in um villa rica georgia which is like a 40 minute drive out of outside of atlanta and he was saying they're the first gallery there and so those collectors were like, yo, we really appreciate you because now we don't have to drive a freaking hour to Atlanta just to experience the art. So you're doing the same yeah. thing in terms of making it a lot more yeah. accessible for collectors and the fact that you're highlighting these artists of different mediums, right? So yeah, definitely. Letters, um, for people who have like the illustrative art, you have like the printer service on the go to like get prints out there so another way to be more accessible and your more traditional mediums as well so that's really dope and hey look yeah, break the record shoot hit up guinness <laughs> yeah man yeah I'm, I'm trying to go down in history leave a legacy you know uh for my, my children my children's children and like i said um it's uh it's it's bigger than me man because um I, every time i create something or some god puts something in my my heart I always try to figure out how I can, co you know, collaborate, bring others in so they can eat, so they can get involved with it some kind of way. So, you know, because it's not a lot about me, man, because, you know what I'm saying? I, you know, me, I like, I, I tell my people this. When I, they come under my tutelage, I'll say, hey, I tell you, I don't want you to be like me. I want you to be better than me, go farther than me, go higher than me. So if you make it up there first, you can pull me up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You can pull me up there with you. So, but if I make it first, are oh, you coming with me? Coming with me, mainly if you started with me. Absolutely. Yeah. So let, let's yeah. shift gears a little bit and talk about Tia, right? Um, 
Like, so we have this, this convergence of like technology innovation. And I'd be remiss without mentioning like throughout your career, you have always found ways to bring in the intersections of art with something else. Like you had exhibitions with art and fashion, art and music, and now you're doing yeah. this newer realm of art and technology. Can you tell us more about like this inspiration for Tia? And like, yeah, how, how do we get here? Well, the um the Tia event, man, it um it uh, once again it was a, an evolutionary uh concept because um and plus it's also um opening the door for artists that the doors wasn't getting opened here in my city, yeah. you know, because um most gal most galleries and organizations here and businesses that do put on the shows they just work with their own little clique. You know, if you're not part of their circle, you're not going to get in their shows. And so I was like, hey, you know, I've met these people and they were the ones that didn't get to get in them shows. And they were really mad and stuff. And I, I love their artwork. So, and, you know, and, I, and sometimes it happened to me. They didn't want my, you know, my, I didn't get in their shows with them. So I didn't, I just created my own shows. And so what I did now with the uh, the com combination, I wanted to start a new form or the future look of, of art galleries. Uh, besides the mini Van Gogh, that's that's the futuristic look of, of um, art galleries all itself. But then the artwork itself, I wanted to make the artwork more futuristic. So mm -hmm. therefore, the artwork has to have some kind of component with innovation or some kind of component with uh, technology. So we, you know what I'm saying, you, either if it's uh, um, the goggles on, you know, look at some artwork in the uh, virtual realm, uh, the augmented reality is really growing really big this nowadays because it can make you, uh, this artwork is, uh, it's just called uh, Rihanna, Rihanna's eye candy. It can make her move. And when you put your phone up to it, you know, she can talk, she can sing a Rihanna song. You know what I'm saying? Had this moving and everything. So that's more the technology part of this, um, all of the, uh, the TIA event. We try to bring more technology, even with the vendors. So I wanted my vendors to be some kind of a high tech or innovative um, product or service. So you might go there and you get those uh, those new um, business cards that taps or the, the little re round ones. You know, just tap a phone or just aim it at your phone, and you got my business card on there. Yeah. Um, QR codes. I want somebody to be there, but make your QR code with your with your resume or your business card on there, and you know, you can just get it printed out right then and there. Also, uh, just high tech innovations. Um, and another part of the innovations is um, some of the art is not going to be the typical canvas. Mm -hmm. It's going to be um, one lady uses um, plaster, rubber, tar, and she'll create an art piece. And you know, and it's three di three dimensional, and it is amazing. Her name is Rebecca. Oh, yeah, you know, yeah. yeah. Man, you know, so she's got some of the most amazing artwork mm -hmm. that, you know, you like, how did you come up with that? You know, I asked her the same question you asked me. How did you get there? And, you know, she told her story. And um, and I said, hey, well, you know, you definitely got to be in the show. She was like, cool. And then, uh, yeah, so uh, the, the rest of the artists, man, they all have um, different aspects of innovations in their artwork, even the the picture, the image itself can can represent some kind of an innovation or technology, you know? So it don't have to be moving and grooving or something or, or talking. It could be just the image itself that was painted on it can put you in the innovation and technology sphere in your mind. You'd be like, oh man, that's pretty good. That's deep. Yeah. And you know, how does the city make you have to ask them, how did you get there with that? What made yeah. you, you know, what Say yep. again. Yeah, I was saying like um how has the, you say? how has the reception of the city been to just this thing? Because to my understanding, this is like one of the first or if not the first art and innovation event that's happened in Indy. Yeah, it uh it is. Uh because I've uh did a little research. I haven't found anybody that's put combined art. Um, I've heard some people may say innovative art. Uh, that's about 
some of it I've heard uh, in, in our city. But, um, man, the city is um, backing me 100%. Like I said, they're, they're part of the fund, the funders uh, that uh, put the backing on this here uh, TIA event. It's the state of Indiana. You know what I'm saying? I put their logo boom, right at the bottom of the flyer. And yeah. on my um, and on my uh, advertisements, let everybody know that, hey, I'm backed by the state of Indiana. Um, I got a, a letter coming from our congressman. He uh, wrote a letter for the T event. He couldn't make it. So he said, hey, I want to send you a letter. You, you know, he uh, he's one of my biggest fans, too. Uh, Andre Carson, uh, Congressman Andre Carson. He, um, he's bought one of my, not this piece, but he got a, that Jesus piece. I put it on, I sell those on hoodies and T-shirts. And he seen it one time I was wearing it and uh, bought it. Matter of fact, it was a Tupac. Yeah, it was mm -hmm. a Tupac eye candy collection piece and uh, had to take it to his office. And uh, yeah, so he's uh, gonna send a picture wearing my shirt, uh, the hoodie. And uh, yeah, so like I say, we got state, Congress people. Uh, oh, and um, our mayor, our de deputy mayor, um, Judith Thomas, uh, she'll be there also. Representing, you know what I mean. So I got some of uh, my city and the state backing me up. Okay, okay. Yeah. So you're gonna get the keys to the city pretty soon, is what I'm hearing. Like you keep doing. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Well, I get another one. I got one back in the day. Oh okay. Sure. I, yeah, yeah. Because I mean, I've been in the arts all my life. Uh, and like yeah. I say, just fun fact, back in the '80s. Yeah, I bet I was back there in the '80s, man. Uh, when breakdancing first started. So I was one of our uh, indies. Indie New City Breakers back in the day. Oh, and, you, uh, yeah. you was b boying Man, I was pal. I was breaking it up. But back in the day, though, you know, <laughs> breaking it down. And, uh, yeah, we won a we won a major contest. And uh, our mayor back then was Mayor Hutnut. Uh, he gave us a key to the city, me and my whole crew. So yeah, that was pretty amazing, you know? That is amazing that you have just all these intersections of creativity and kosher that you have been taking forefront within your career so that's amazing yeah. definitely excited about the tia event so if for the people who are out in indianapolis or like the greater indy area like when is the event how can they get involved and what should they look forward to well uh yes the tia event is going to be august the um august the 10th that is not this Saturday, but next Saturday. So it's around the corner. Um, it's already for us uh, administrations and uh, all that. We get it pretty much tightened up. Um, so it's going to be from 1 p.m. to 6 p.m. Mm -hmm. And God willing, the weather will be right. Uh, but if not, we're going to have some tents. We ain't going to let nothing stop us. You know, um, mm -hmm. what they can uh, expect is something brand new. I'm going to yeah. tell you, man. This is, I, I wish you could be here, but hey, but you're gonna get all of the footage. I'll send you every all kind of footage, and I'm gonna go live on some platforms. I'm gonna have a podcaster there running uh, live uh, and recording. But uh, just to toss out some of the new things, man, that I'm gonna do, this is gonna blow people's minds. Besides, they're gonna come and see the mini band goes, you know, a fleet of them for the first time. Yeah, I know you heard. I've got a, I've got a, a, a also another business called the uh, A Team. Party rental, the letter A. Like, remember the old A team with yeah, Mr. A -team. T. I tell people, I tell people, I'm the new Mr. T. I say, I pity the fool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. hey, we the A team party rental. So look, we, I have the extra, I have the extra large 360 photo booths. You know, you seen those, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Well, you know, people have those little ones. Two, three people get on there. My small one holds seven people, and then I have an extra large one. So okay. I'm gonna have one of those 360 photo booths there. And as soon as the uh, congressman, or no, not the congressman, but the deputy mayor get there, I convert my 360 photo booth into the 360 paint relay booth. Yeah. So this is going to blow people's minds. First ever. First one ever created and made. So I take the, the ring light off of the, the 360 that goes around, put a 16 by 20 canvas on there, mount it on there. Me, you, say me, you and four other people get on there. We have one cup. With some paint and I went mean, paintbrush. I might have red, you got blue, he got red, yellow. As it's going around us slowly, you know, I got that many seconds to add something onto that painting. Goes to the next person. Mm -hmm. They're gonna add on. That next person, they're gonna add on. So when they come back around to you, you don't know what didn't happen to the piece you started, but you're gonna add on to that. Then yeah, you're gonna yeah. keep going around. Cool. About eight, man, about eight, ten revolutions and see what kind of creation we come up with. 
you're gonna video the thing the whole time and time lapse it and and had a video for everybody man and um then then our, our piece itself we'll let the uh we'll donate that piece to the martin luther king center for being our sponsor and have a video that they can have playing next to the piece and show you know me and the mayor deputy mayor and everybody on there having fun clowning you know talking trash you know what i'm talking about hey yeah. you're messing up my piece put <laughs> add some of that blue on there you know so we're gonna be just live man that that is gonna be hilarious you know yeah. that's gonna be hilarious i'm gonna love it so yes sir uh I just wish you could be involved, but next when the next time you come to Indianapolis, we're gonna do it. All right. Yes, we're sir. Do that. Sure. Hold us to it. And yeah, I would be remiss. You know, Derek, he's too humble to mention this, but this event was originally supposed to be back in what May or July was it? May, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah it was moved, um... not because of logistics or because they couldn't do it, but because it just got so big in terms of like yeah. the interest, the energy where Derek was like, yo, the current venue we have is just going to be too small and not be able to do this event any justice. So they, him, and the sponsors was urging you too. Like you guys yeah. all together on the back end, got an even bigger venue. You're doing yes. it to have even more impact. So I urge everybody, if you're in Indianapolis or the greater Indy area, come on out to the TIA Festival, man, and get blown away with the tech and innovation and the arts and just how art, culture, and tech is all converging into one. Yes, yes, August the 10th, August the 10th, in two weeks, well, two more weekends, Saturday, not this Saturday, next Saturday, come and get blown away. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be a lot of interactive, artistic uh, activities. So, you know, you're going to come out, leave out of there with some kind of art piece. You might become a piece of art and walk up out of there. Because, you know, I, I'm just coming with all kinds of new ideas that I didn't even mention right here, but we are definitely get to show you guys on a video i send it i send you a lot of footage awesome awesome man well anything else you want to leave for the people as you're thinking about not only just tia but how they should go about like collecting art whether it's your art or like art in general yeah um well i would like to tell this um, and see, and what I was doing with this uh, print on demand is that, yeah, I do have pieces that might cost seven thousand dollars, twenty twelve thousand dollars, maybe five, six hundred dollars. People's not expecting to spend that, you know. So therefore, we always have affordable artwork. So mm -hmm. one on one side of my minivan, it'll be artwork for like fifty dollars and under, you know, mm -hmm. original pieces that I just make just so for people can afford, so they can leave home with a piece of art. Yeah. So. You know, I always ask the artists, you know, hey, you got any artwork in this price range? You know, they may say, okay, um, you're a good person. I'll go ahead and let you have that for this. It ain't devaluing their their value of their artwork because you don't want to do that. But you just letting them know that you value that artist, his time to learn, the time to take out, to learn all this art skills and the time to take out, he, they take out to make that art. So therefore, you're just giving that more value back to them which we love to have that, you know, just knowing that you love our work. So I'd like to tell everybody, just follow us uh, on our pages, like our stuff. Um, I, you can find me on, on Derek Tudor on everything, or some things will say Derek Tudor Arts, but the majority is Derek Tudor, D-E-R-E-K-T-U-D-E-R. -E -E so I got the E-R on the bottom of the Tudor. And you can put .com behind it, DerekTudor.com. I got a website. On there shows you the minivan go shows you a lot of different forms of what uh the art that i do um and um and look, look be looking for look out for um my uh upcoming um workshops i'm gonna have it's called flipping art so what i do is once i create a piece of art like this jesus piece here i will turn it and flip that piece of art into 20 different sources of income so i'm gonna train people how to do that you know so like say i will take this piece turn it into t-shirts. I will turn this piece as, paint, as hand painted. I'll digitize it. See, here's one. I digitized that same piece. So now it's digital. You can tell the difference because it's, it's, it's a little bit more um, yeah. highlighted and stuff. So that's a, this is called Picture This Jesus. And the reason why I say you can see the Polaroids in there, 
and he's holding it and going in and out of all the pieces. And uh, that piece right there kind of made me famous there. So, but I just show people how to flip art. So get ready for uh, that workshop coming out. And uh, like I said, and uh, you can see some of the coolest, fun, most fun videos ever on all my platforms. Cause I'm uh, I'm really acting a fool and having fun while I do this. So you know, cause uh, cause I'm a fun person. As you see, I got a uh, party rental company that we sell. We rent only the fun equipment. We don't rent tables and chairs. We rent the fun stuff. You know. So yeah. So you just uh. You just blessed me with this here interview, man. I really appreciate you, man. I thank you from the bottom of my heart. And I'm glad you're one of our partners, too, at the TIA event. So we're going to be having you represented very highly there, all the way in Indianapolis, to the fullest. We appreciate you, man. I appreciate just the partnership. I appreciate you wanting to be on the podcast. And and it is off with episode three of the Timbo Two podcast, man. So you heard Derek here. Please make sure you follow him on all his social media platforms and attend. If even if you can't attend Tia, like support virtually and see like um like I mean you got the minivan on the go, so <laughs> he might be in your neighborhood, right? Yeah, it's right. We be to see you. Yeah, and remember, if you haven't started your first collection yet, as Derek mentioned, like this artwork and price ranges for everybody. So whether that's if you have $50 or under for like a smaller original print or piece, or if you have more disposable income for like a more high value piece, there's something for you. So definitely come out to Tia and keep on supporting our man, Derek Tudor. And we all thank you for watching episode three of the Timbo2 podcast. I'm Mamadou and I'm signing out. <laughs>